and welcome to a, another week of Connect Groups. Miles just preached a wonderful message on taking the road less traveled and I uh, hope that that inspires uh, in you, uh, you know, that desire to, to, to hear and, and to, to find out what is God's call for you in this season. And especially, uh, you know, we also just had the big surf uh, this week and yeah, we'd love for you to, to see if God is calling you to a, a new season of serving in HTVB. So if you haven't gone on to the link, uh, the link is right here. Uh, we'd love for you to check out uh, the areas where you can serve uh, and, and in really where God is calling you to, uh, to develop uh, and, and, and to grow you on your, on your discipleship journey and your faith journey uh, here in HDBB. Uh, and another thing that's really happening really soon is Alpha and, and uh, for those who, who are new to Alpha, it is a, a 10 week course where uh, you know, people will get to come together to discuss uh, matters of, of the faith. So if you or if your friends are interested in finding out more about Christianity uh, or, or want to talk about uh, the issues of life, then we'd love for you to sign up for Alpha. Uh, it starts on the first week of March, the first Wednesday of March at 8pm, uh, either online or on-site. So yeah, we'd love to, to see you guys here for Alpha as well. So uh, yeah, we just heard from, from Miles about taking the road less travel and we're going to dig in a little bit deeper into that story uh, with Philip and uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. So uh, looking forward to everything that you're going to draw out uh, of, of that passage and, and indeed really journey, journeying together uh, with Philip uh, on, on his faith journey and on his road less travel as you discover your road less travel. As well, so let's start off this time with a with a with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Spirit that is here, leading and guiding us by your grace, leading us to where you are calling us, and also giving us the assurance that where you lead and where you call, you will also equip. And so we pray that as we come into your word in this time, that your spirit would shine a light into our lives and into where you are calling us in this season. We commit this time into your great and mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey everyone, Hi. welcome to tonight's Connect Group Bible Study. We're going to be looking at Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, uh, the passage that Miles spoke on on Sunday on the title Take the Road Less Travelled. Take the Road Less Travelled. And we hope that you enjoyed the extra special Sunday that was The Big Serve. Um, and if you want, uh, if you missed out on it, uh, do check out the website. Don't miss out. Get in touch with the team. Uh, great opportunity to get involved again in the life of the church as we go into this new normal, next normal, yeah. whatever the Lord's with us. Anyway, um, we're going to read together uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. And as always, if you can have it open in front of you, pen in hand, any questions you have, stick it on it. Question mark. Anything that stands out to you? Exclamation mark. Anything you can action and put into uh, practice, put an arrow next to it. So let's read, starting at verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran to up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with them. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. 
He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What what can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at the Azotus and travelled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. So, as our baby has just awoken, Mm -hmm. should we get him? I'll go get him. Get him. Uh, And while Kate does that, um, let's pause and let's discuss anything that stood out to you, any questions you have or anything that you can apply. Hey, well, I hope that discussion was good. Cohen didn't want to miss out, so no. he's here. Uh, Jeff FOMO, babe. <laughs> so, uh, Miles's talk uh, began by looking at these times in our life where we are taken out of things that seem really fruitful. Yeah. Um, and you've got this here. It says, now the angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, before this, uh, persecution had forced the disciples out of Jerusalem and into the surrounding areas. And this has actually been really fruitful for the gospel. Mm -hmm. There were healings, there was salvation, deliverance. People is busy doing something that is going... going really well. It's fruitful. It's exciting. It's like, oh, wow, God is moving. This is everything we long for. And then Mm -hmm. the angel says of God says, go. Leave and not just leave, leave, but go and like go down the desert road. There there are two roads going that way. This is the one that's like the quiet road, it's the more dangerous Dangerous. road. This is like when Waze says, Leave the motorway, take the back road. So you're like, like, "Mm, Are you sure? (laughs) Um, and he's basically like, Philip, leave the party and go and do this. And, um, and I think that the encouragement of this story is don't fear when the Lord sends you on a road like this, don't fear Mm. because we're going to meet him on it and he's going to do more than we could have done if we'd have stayed where we where He'll we wanted. He'll be there on the journey. Yeah. And I think this is important. You know, we are not the centre of the story. We're not the centre of the story. We are playing our part. Like, I don't know, who do you think is indispensable to yeah. the kingdom of God? Do you know what? They're not. They're not. Uh, <laughs> give thanks for them. Yeah. Uh, uh, everything has its season. And I, some one of the things we learned being at HDB in London, that under Sandy Miller's leadership and then Nikki Gumbel's leadership, they kept giving away their best. So generous. And one of the people they gave away is a guy called Archie Coates, who went off and planted a church. Mm-hmm. And now Nikki is about to retire from leading yeah. HDB and Archie's coming back. Yeah. To become the vicar. But that would have again. never been there if they hadn't given him away in the first place. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and other leaders took Philip's place in Samaria. Um, and so I think that's the first thing is, is, is don't worry when the Lord sends you out from the party. Sends you away. <laughs> to do the things that are uh, maybe less exciting. The other thing that's interesting here is... Um, is when the Lord gives Cohen you... Cohen a... is like seriously listening to Daddy here. Mm. He's just like... Mm. Yeah. Okay, Daddy. Or he's thinking... I disagree. Um, (laughs) Probably. But the other thing I think is important here is that when the Lord gives us a curveball, things that don't make sense, he tends to be direct. He tends to be clear. So we've often said, you know. He's quite kind in that way. Yeah. Yeah. God's kind. Like. Yeah. We're not. He's not playing games with us. (laughs) Oh, you got to figure it out on your own. And no. (laughs) So, So we've often drawn it like this. Your calling is often where your strengths and your passions collide. So we're tended, the, the Lord tends to call us along the lines of our competency, but he always calls us beyond our comfort, beyond our competency, mm. because this is a life of faith and to trust in him. And he calls us to be with him. And the edge of the, ki- where is he? He's always on the edge of the kingdom, where yeah. the, the now and the not yet of the kingdom, where, where the battle is fiercest, but the most exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so often it will be where your strength and passions collide, but then there'll be this curveball. But in our experience, he's always really clear when when he does that. And here you've you've got an angel of the Lord. I mean, he's never been that clear for us. Um, <laughs> I've never had an angel of the Lord. It's but, me. But that's, um, you know, excited. And he, he goes out and he started on his way and he meets this Ethiopian eunuch. eunuch. 
And um, and what's interesting about this is this guy's excluded on sort of two levels. First of all, he's a Gentile. It's not part of the, the Jewish people, but also he's a eunuch. Um, so um, in Deuteronomy 23, it says this, no one whose testicles are crushed or a male organ is cut off shall enter the assembly of God. Wow. And um, I haven't got time to go into it there. There's a load of great Bible project stuff on it. Um, but if you want to explore some of the sort of the symbolic reason of what the temple stood for, why that might be the case. I'm going to have to stand you, up to listen to you. Okay. <laughs> you, you, can, um, you can explore that. But basically, he's excluded from the the temple worship and he's an important official uh, and we're told he's in charge of the treasury of the candidate like he's the he's like a finance minister he, he's really powerful but this is a dangerous position to hold Look, it's in a dangerous court. position like <laughs> your, your life was at risk if you did this if the money went missing or if yeah. you fell out of favor others would want your your head it's not working with him, is it? No, it's not. I'll be back in one minute. You do this bit on your own, I'll come back. Okay. Kate will come back in a moment when Cohen's calmed down. But, um, you know, this was a dangerous place to be. You know, palaces and places of power are full of backbiting, power grabbing. There's zero margin for error. The bottom line is final. It's survival of the fittest. He, he lived in a world of fear, competition and rivals at the edge of violence with no one to rely on but himself. You know, he lived and worked in a culture of fear. Uh, and the reverse is what script is true of what scripture tells us, that perfect fear also tries to cast out love in our life. And so you've got this guy and Philip is going to speak into his life. And this is key for quite a few reasons. As, as we've said, he's left the party. Um, but actually, this guy he speaks to, this might be the first non-Jew to be brought into the family of God. He's an outsider. That, that is brought in as well. He's potentially the start of the Eastern Orthodox, uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which has 31 million people in it today. It's potentially the first convert in all of Africa. And this is maybe the first sort of outwardly, outward facing part of the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham. So yeah, he, he left something that was fruitful, but he's now involved in something that is incredibly fruitful way more than you could ever imagine and way bigger than Philip's life this doesn't come into its fullest fulfillment until way after Philip's gone and I think about the official he's he's a eunuch he's somebody who couldn't have physical children and he ends up as a spiritual father to millions you know there are no more genealogies after Jesus because what matters now is not the flesh but the spirit before it was fill the world with children which is still good but now that the command is to fill the world with disciples and so Philip leaves something that is good, but he ends up being involved in something that is incredibly more fruitful than he could have ever imagined. And so our first um, uh, four questions, and as always, you might not have time to do all of these questions, but, but here's some for you to discuss. Where has God thrown you a curveball in the past? Number two, where has he asked you to let go of something that was fruitful? And what happened? Have you ever experienced God moving you on? And number four, what is the road less travelled for you at the moment in your workplace? Maybe it's the person that people would rather not care for, the role no one else wants, or the position that doesn't have the prestige. Where is the road less travelled for you at the moment? Take a few moments and discuss whatever grabs your interest. I hope you enjoyed discussing that. I think it might be helpful if we just share a bit of our experience of that. Where has God thrown you a curveball in the past and how did he make it obvious? Well, I feel like the whole of our life's been a bit of a curveball. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think for coming to KL, you know, out of all of our friends, we were always like the stay at home. Yeah, like, we're, home, home, like, small, we're quite like, happy at home. Yeah, uh, and, um, and we had a, like uh, a word of knowledge about coming to Asia and Malaysia. Um, well, no, Asia. Um before we were asked in any way and obviously that's not the way you make the decision but no, we, I don't it think did have, help in making it though in I, the end well, i don't think Once we'd have considered we, would no. we if we if we hadn't had that word if of god hadn't knowledge. kind of paved yeah. the way before and then also like i've got kl and kate uh, one of my mentors when we were dating i was talking to him about you am i careful how, yeah and how amazing you are and he just said to me okay what's next 
And for me, that question was a word of wisdom because in my head, I was like, oh, it's going to be this and this and wouldn't propose to you or get married for ages. And he's just like, what next? And it, it just got me thinking, I was like, oh, well, that's that makes that's the next right thing to do, the next step. Um, so we proposed, we got married. And that turned out to be a really great time in sort of the lives of our families as well and for us mm. um, uh, to get married. So that the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, where has God let, <laughs> got you to let go of something fruitful? Um I don't know, but the key there is not that you just abandon things, but it's that you, you're always thinking at some point, I've got to hand this on. I've got to hand this on at some point, unless R- the Lord shuts up, it down. Raise up, you know, raise yeah. up other people who are better than you. And, yeah. and that kind of goes into, have you ever experienced God moving you on? And our, our classic is, we used to be the service pastors at the 5pm. And it was really nice. It was like, really it was nice, great. And we but were it, seeing, like, we tried like, everything and nothing would nothing make really it Nothing Nothing really grow. made it grow. We would normally start in faith with more people, in the band than in the congregation yeah we would and do you remember standing up and like welcome to the five and there's like two people like, <laughs> yeah. and we tried everything and yeah, it, it just it just sort of slowly grew and, and it was a great place to raise up people but basically when we got pregnant with the twins and we had to leave we handed it over to Abel and just said the and it grew. And it grew. And we were a like, ah, oh, the thing that we needed to do <laughs> was to make get it grow out of the way. <laughs> was to leave. Um, and I was talking with Abel and Jacintha recently, and they said they've just handed it over to Josh and Pris and Aaron. And Abel and Jacintha and are now happened? leading. And, and they said it's just grown it's again. Grown. <laughs> and, and they said loads of people have just turned up who, yeah. who weren't there before. And I, I, it's probably a bit of, you know, God doesn't put new wines into old wineskin, not mm-hmm. that. Are we old flappy wine skins? Yeah. No, I no, added no. the flappy. No, but um, I think that sense of when he wants to do something new, he, he waits mm. till the moment. Uh, yeah. and we shouldn't be afraid of letting God no. move us on and out of the way sometimes. So the, the summary that is. of all of that for Miles was just obey the, obey Lord. the Lord. Obey the Lord. Even if it means leaving something fruitful. Mm. Um, this man, though, had gone to Jerusalem and on his way, he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah. Now, I just think... Can so... you imagine trying to do that? I know. I'm just like... And it's a... Sc- <laughs> like, well, here's Scroll. my list of things we should be grateful for. <laughs> then you had to travel to a set place to worship. What an effort. Uh, then they didn't have a New Testament. As Sandy Miller often said, the New Testament church was the only church not to have the New Testament. <laughs> they didn't have the New Testament. He only had Isaiah on a scroll. scroll like no and you like like we just scroll like they want like this like we have so much to be grateful for it's so easy to read the bible like that scroll would have cost him a lot oh yeah like it, it was a big investment this guy's hungry for something he's traveled this distance he's reading god's word he wants something else um and the the spirit tells philip go to that chariot and stays near uh, and it's just that encouragement, you know, sometimes we're shy about sharing the word of God with, you know, the leader or anybody in the world of God, but leaders of the world of God. But, but like, you know, the world isn't shy about imposing, imposing anything on us. Yeah. yeah. So we, we Why should... are we being so shy? Yeah. And God has opened a door and there's just been so many stories. We shared this a little while ago, but somebody was like, you know, my family, uh, my father's side of the family, hardcore Buddhists, I've been praying for them. Um, and then she just got this text asking me to visit my grandma to share the gospel with her because her family are already becoming Christians, <laughs> wanting to join the church. Not sure what caused them to want to join Christian at Christianity, but something is definitely happening because this family is the hardest group of people. You know, we just have to pray for God to open doors. God cause... loves that prayer. Like Jesus loves hearing that prayer. Lord, give me opportunities. Yeah. He loves to open doors. And so Philip runs up alongside of the chariot. And I wonder if other people would run up to the chariot wanting a handout. Yeah, this maybe guy's money. And, yeah. and he's running up to give him something. And he hears the guy reading from the uh, Isaiah, the prophet. Oh, so he's doing it out loud. He's doing it out loud. Ah. And uh, he, he, this guy's looking for life. And Philip says, do you understand what you're reading? Can you exegete that? Nope. No. And um, how am I going to be able to do that without someone explaining it to me? And I think that's re- really interesting because the Bible is formative. It does change us by reading, but it yeah. is also supposed to be informative. This is faith yeah. seeking understanding. Um, you know, there's different purposes of scripture to be changed, to understand, to encounter Jesus and different traditions focus on different aspects. Mm-hmm. But here it's understanding that he's going after. And he says, how can I explain unless someone, uh, you know, explains to me? Because let's be honest, Isaiah. It's not not an easy book, is it? Not the easiest book to understand. And um, Some weird stuff, isn't it? And then this is the passage that the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to slaughter. As a lamb before its shearers is silent, he did not open his mouth. 
And I kind of think, you know, the eunuch left, lived like that. He, he knew what it was like for his life to be, you know, the whim of another leader. It was a dangerous position we talked about that he held. A powerful one, but also a precarious one. Mm. And in his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? Again, this eunuch wouldn't have had descendants, um, for his life was taken from the earth. Yeah, he'll have been seeing the parallels to himself as really Yeah, it, I, I think it probably resonated with, with him. him. Um, but again, like, there's just, you know, there's so much going on here. But Maybe that also shapes his next question. Who is he talking about, himself or someone else? You know, you yeah. Because this uh, this is me. This is just, I yeah, like I hadn't this. thought of that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, is this me? Or is this someone else? <laughs> or is this the prophet? And, um, and he says, basically, explain it to me. Um, and because there's so much hidden here, you know, Stephen Colbert in his amazing little speech he did recently said, death is not a defeat. What looks like defeat is actually a victory. And all of that's hidden up inside of this, but we don't always see it immediately. So we ask for help and we read this. Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. I think that's good because sometimes when someone asks us a question, we can go off, can't we? It's like, no, use the words they've already put in front of you. Use the words they're already using yeah. that they're thinking about because they've used those words because that's what they're, that's they're on their mulling heart. over. That's what God's <laughs> yeah. put on their heart. So use yeah. those words and repeat them to explain whatever they're wanting to know. Well, it's quite a good evangelistic strategy. It's very like Jesus. He meets them where they are and he points them to where he, to where Jesus is. And, um, you know, I think this is this is interesting as well. Um, you know, one of the ways that the Lord is our shepherd is that he provides other shepherds. He's not selfish with the shepherding. Like, um, you know, you learn to read because you had models and mentors, mm. people who showed you how to read by reading with you. And it's the same with the scripture. We probably don't even remember them. Yeah, yeah. Peter Lightheart says it like this, that the spirit as our mentor points to our model. Yeah. Jesus is the model reader, but he still does this by giving us other model readers. We we learn to read the Bible in, in community. community. And communion. And it's partly uh, what we're doing here yeah. is that you're reading yeah. it together because we learn from each other. And we all probably have teachers who through the internet we're able to hear from or people that we read or, or stuff that just resonates we're like yeah. that helps expand my understanding of scripture like me i love rick warren yeah very 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 happy to <laughs> be yeah. taught by him and I, and I love this you know we were uh your parents church has this thing one child one mentor one, one hour, hour a week and so good it's, it's a model of helping coach other people yeah. and that that's for lots of things discipleship but also business mm -hmm. skills and life skills how to be an adult and stuff like that um but that's what we do for each other as well as we read the bible the other key thing here and this was miles's point is he told him the good news about jesus like philip cuts through 200 years of historical criticism and says it's all about, about jesus. jesus it's about jesus it's about jesus it's about jesus jesus is the lens through which we view the scriptures he's the one we must proclaim when we share our faith um it's all about him uh, a friend of ours mm. said this recently i did feel challenged by that just one second like just saying the name jesus mm. like instead of just you know the lord or or god like like saying jesus is a is a powerful thing it grounds mm. it and it's also quite offensive but also yeah oh, sorry yeah the yeah lean on your table there I for the mic we were wobbling the table uh -huh. anyway <laughs> yeah no it's that yeah. it's that specificness of yeah. who we're pointing yeah. to is really key important um david simpson a, a friend of ours said this all paths of the bible lead to jesus even when it doesn't seem like it so when you hit those moments jump over whatever ditch or hedge you need to to get back onto that path you can come back later to go why is this ditch here and fill it in and why is this hedge here and what's it about but it but it's all about jesus um and, and so you can keep going even when you hit these hard bits and come back later on talk to other people uh to, to help understand uh reading it and miles talked about the lens of jesus this is all about jesus but it's the light of the holy spirit i love it your little doodles it as well well th this is another way to think about reading scripture from nt Wright. he says when we come to read the bible you need scripture tradition and reason um so scripture is like the collection of the bible the books that make up the bible um tradition is a record of everybody else's reading of, of the this bible, bible. <laughs> because it's not like the holy spirit is the like i'm the first person the holy spirit has ever spoken to or the no. first person to ever think of this theological concept probably, yeah probably not yeah you know and then like reason is the 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 way that we look at and the lens through which we we read and that's reason it's also experience but it's it's ultimately is it's the person of jesus that we're looking at and we read the bible because because he read it ultimately um so mars's point was jesus is the key to unlocking scripture so question five 
and on. Where do you need to dig to do some research? Are there topics in scripture you need to explore for you, for yourself, for others? And are there things you are struggling with? In scripture at the moment, question seven, where in the past have you wrestled with something in scripture and through that received revelation into it? And lastly, question eight, do you need to come study at SBTC? (laughs) I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to come study at SBTC, information on the website, sbtc.my. Uh, open days are coming up. Uh, we've both done the course. I can't tell you. It is so good. So good. It's so good. So good. Okay, the last bit. Um, G- uh, Miles' point was when we spend time with Jesus, we do the things he did. When we spend time with Jesus, we do the things he did. So as they travel along the road, they come to some water and the eunuch said, look, here's water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? He's like, I want into this world. I, 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 to get in on this good news, I want to be baptised. Baptism is the symbol of joining God's family, of, of mm. entering into the church. And I love church. that sort of like jumping in that he's like, he discovered it and it wasn't, well, oh, I've, I've discovered it and now I'm going to like, like figure it out some more. Like, like he was just like, no, now, like I'm all in. Yeah. Like Jesus is all in for us. Like I, he obviously saw that and was like, yeah. well, I want to be all in too. Like Jesus is the way. And the key thing we often say is baptism, the start line, not the finishing line. Yeah. Like, look, look, what can stand in the way of me being baptized? People would have thought lots of things, his race, yeah. his former faith, his disqualifications because he's a eunuch, his past life, because he's probably been a pretty ruthless guy to get to his position. He, he doesn't understand everything in Isaiah, join yeah, the club. There's quite a um, few reasons, actually, on that some people might have argued. And actually, in Jesus, there are no reasons. No reasons. Every barrier is broken down to join him. This is partly why we baptize infants, and it's yeah. partly why we don't make people take a really long class, and An you exam. have to get a degree yeah. and uh, all this before because you get baptized. Because it's the starting line of yeah. your life lived. Yeah running life with Jesus yeah and and he says I want to enter into this new way of life and I think if you think about it Walter Brueggemann uh speaks about this he said this guy you know he, he's in a palace he's working in finance for for a queen it's a really precarious position he worked in in a world of fear on the edge of violence which works like fear sells fear yeah. raises funds but also fear makes us selfish makes neighbours into competitors, fear refuses the other. Perfect fear drives out all love. That's the world he lives in. And he gets a glimpse of the world that Jesus is offering us. The good news of Jesus reverses this. And in baptism, this guy moves from from a world of fear into a world of love. And he's like, I want it. I want want in. And so like Jesus, he gets baptised. But also, there's something lovely here. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. The eunuch didn't see him in again. But he didn't need to because he went away rejoicing. Did he, like, take him away, like... I don't know. I don't know. Or to, like, take him away. Come this way, Philip. But what's interesting is the parallel with Acts 24. Yeah. Because this was Mars' thing that you do what, what Jesus did. Because mm. Jesus walked with his disciples after the resurrection on the road mm. to Emmaus. He illuminated the scriptures to them. He then shares communion, the other sacrament, baptism and communion. And, and, then, uh, and then he disappears. And he's taken from their view. Uh, and then Philip now does this same thing. Um, and I like this as well. It's basically, share, you know, so somebody said this, like, share the gospel die be forgotten um a little bit brutal it's like live laugh learn learn it's like disciple die disappear um but he gets out the way again he just moves on he's done his job and philip goes off and does the next thing that the lord has um for him and this eunuch probably saw a load of fruit yeah what he did because we now have the ethiopian orthodox church with 31 million people in it yeah like um, it's possibly the most fruitful conversation ever Ever i imagine in the history so um yeah question nine uh who are the people you struggle to have faith for to come to christ and why Question 10, where is fear trying to rule in your life? And so if I just give Um, a little example of that (laughs) is like, you know, for me, you know, sometimes uh, fear comes in the form of like a perfectionism in writing. I really don't mind public speaking, but I don't like private writing and perfectionism creeps in. It's like a fear (laughs) of like not doing. uh, And, you know, and, and one of the things to know, though, is when fear comes in, often comes into the areas of your calling which is helpful because then you can reverse engineer to go, actually, this is what the Lord is helping me to get into. It's why I'm encountering this resistance, which is partly why it's helpful to to name it. And question 11, 
do you need to get baptised? If you are not baptised, we would love to baptise you. Oh, and yes, the next we time, would. Give us an email. Reach out to Alvin. Uh, we would love to baptise you. It's the start thing. line, not the finishing line. Yeah. Um, discuss those questions and then we're going to pray for you. Okay. It, what, what's key in this is that the spirit is at work. The spirit's at work. All this. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. And Philip ran up to the chariot. And I love that. It's kind of a picture of what the Holy Spirit does as well. He comes near to us and he runs alongside us. Uh, that word, the paraclete, that he's the one who draws alongside us. And so let's pray now. Why don't you pray for us as we, um, as we close our time together? Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come alongside us, that you would draw near to every person praying now. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and speak to us and captivate our minds, open opportunities for us to talk about you Mm. and show us the way that we should go in this next season. Lord, where we're holding on to things that have been fruitful, Mm. but you're wanting us to let go to, like Philip, be taken on to the next thing that you want to do in and through us. Lord, Give us the courage to let go. Help us to overcome fear. We thank you, Lord, that whilst fear tries to drive out love, your perfect love drives out all fear. And so, Holy Spirit, come pour out your love into our hearts again, we pray. Amen. 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 Have a good time praying for one another and see you on Sunday. God bless. Bye.